the uh, report yesterday, maybe more importantly than anything, it totally exonerates me. Well, the end result was wrong. I mean, there was total bias. I mean, when you look at Peter Strzok and what he said about me, when you look at Comey, all his moves. So I guess, you know, it's interesting. It was a pretty good report. And then I say that the IG blew it at the very end with that statement. Peter Strzok should have been fired a long time ago. And others it should have been fired. Would... The top people were horrible. You look at what happened. They were plotting against my election. This report contains no evidence to make any reasonable person conclude that the special counsel investigation is anything other than independent, impartial, and just as important today as it was before this report was issued. It was a bit surreal today, the president walking out on the North Lawn there, an interview live on Fox and Friends, and then holding a gaggle with the press. It's the first time ever that that has happened with the president of the United States, and he made a lot of news today. Let's bring in our panel. Joining me here at Shittacock Hills, my colleagues, Bill Hemmer, co-host of America's Newsroom here on Fox News Channel, now three hours, <laughs> and Melissa Francis, co-host of After the Bell on Fox Business Network. In Washington, Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist, and in New York, Bill McGurn, mainstream columnist for the Wall Street Journal. Welcome all. Bill, that happened right after your hour, yes. and it was continuing <laughs> into during. your hour. Yeah. Um, he what about that, that site? Um, I thought it was quite remarkable, and I, I thought about the juxtaposition between meeting with Chairman Kim on Tuesday and then walking out on the North Lawn, as he did earlier today. It was my sense, Brett, when he became president that he was the one who was going to run his communications department, that he was going to be his press secretary, not literally, but figuratively as commander-in-chief. And the Mueller matter kind of took that, took that club out of his bag, so to speak. Thank Nicely done. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and, and set that to the side for now. And I, w with the economy moving the way it is, I think with the, Korea, the Singapore summit behind him, with the IG report yesterday, m my sense watching it live was, here is a president who feels liberated yet again. Uh, because I, I, I believe he would much rather hold a press conference once a week if his lawyers up to this point had allowed him. Yeah, Molly, there's a lot of uh, low-hanging fruit in this IG report. If you're a Trump supporter uh, in the Trump administration, uh, I think there were a lot of people I talked to who said uh, they were disappointed with the characterization that it was a nothing burger uh, from the start. Yeah, I read all 568 pages, and I have the lack of sleep to prove it. Chuck Schumer is absolutely wrong that, about what he said about this report. It was an exhaustive, detailed look at widespread corruption, bias, poor judgment, bad decision making throughout the FBI, well, as, as focused on that Comey, on the uh, Clinton probe. But of course, the same people were involved in the Clinton probe as were involved in what has now become the special counsel. And when you look at what these people were saying, how they were openly conspiring against Donald Trump's election, how they were fantasizing about his impeachment after the election, and there is, I mean, that really calls into question what's going on with the entire basis of the Mueller probe, particularly as now, a year and a half into this, we have no evidence of treasonous collusion with Russia and a lot of evidence of bad behavior by the FBI. We'll obviously see if there is another IG report to come. The other news made today was about China. Take a listen to what the president said and China's reaction. Well, we're just going to do $50 billion on $50 billion of high technology equipment and other things coming into the country because so much of our secrets, you know, we have the great brain power in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And China and others steal those secrets. If the U.S. takes unilateral and protectionist measures that harm China's interests, we will immediately respond and take necessary measures to defend our legitimate rights and interests. Melissa. Where, where are we looking at here? I mean, is this heading down the road of a trade war? I think all you have to do is look at the markets to see where it's headed. And that's markets went down right away on this news. By the end of the day, they clawed their way back to still down, but well off the lows of the session. There's one thing to keep in mind when you're listening to all this chatter about a trade war. There was a moment at the G7 when President Trump said, hey, why don't we all drop all of our tariffs on everything? 
and it went over like a lead balloon. Everyone just stepped back. There was no response. That's where he's headed. He understands that no tariffs are best for consumers and workers, a true free market. But we haven't had that for a long time. And he's going to continue to use both the carrot and the stick to get closer to that. But that's the truth of the matter. When he said that, it was revealed that he doesn't believe in tariffs. He believes in no tariffs, but he knows it's going to take a lot to push other countries there. Bill, how's that play on Main Street? Well, I, I don't know whether Main Street likes this. Look, the Chinese are guilty of some bad behavior. I'd like to see a few more carrots rather than the sticks. I, too, was heartened by the no tariffs uh, kind of call the president made. But if he were serious about that, I think what he should do is, look, he doesn't like multilateral agreements, right? Negotiate with a partner like Britain or even Canada, a bilateral deal that has no tariffs, like find a partner that has very few um, trade issues with us, negotiate the ideal bilateral, and then say, this deal is open to anyone else who wants the same terms. I, I think that's a more effective way of doing it, and it's more with the carrot than the stick. All right, let's talk immigration. Here's what the president said about that this morning and some reaction. I'm looking at both of them. I certainly wouldn't sign the Momada. What does the one. bill have to I have need, I need a bill that gives this country tremendous border security. I have to have that. We have to get it's rid of have catch the wall? and release. Does that mean the wall? We have to have the wall. If we don't have the wall, there's no bill. Uh, we are waiting the uh, president to clarify his comments. We have negotiated the four pillars uh, deal, his deal. And the president asked this House to act. Everybody says to uh, the public, yes, we want to work in a bipartisan way. Well, you have the opportunity to do it. And you have retreated. There's some heart failure on uh, Capitol Hill today, and the White House put out a statement this afternoon. The president fully supports both the Goodlad bill and the House leadership bill. In this morning's interview, he was commenting on the discharge petition in the House, not the new package. He would sign either the Goodlad or the leadership bills. So straightening that out, Bill, yeah. important clarification. Uh, I have half an eye on you know a, a midterm election that's five months from now. It's my sense that none of this moves until then. Uh, perhaps you know, depending on the outcome in November, you get a little more movement on this. But uh, I, I think. The talk right now is just that. Um, uh, the, the House is one thing, the Senate's a whole different ball game, and uh, they're looking at balance of power. And I, th I think that's that's where this attention. Molly, is. You know, him saying originally that he wouldn't sign the moderate bill made sense. Why give up leverage when you have it right now? The walk back from the White House was curious, and they're saying that this does have the four pillars that Trump sought, except it really does water down chain migration uh, restrictions that were a big part of Trump's goals, and it also expands the amnesty in a way that is really dangerous in how much uh, people who are children of temporary foreign workers uh, would be able to apply for amnesty. That's a really uncontrolled. Uh, program there, and I think that the White House should think a lot about whether they really, truly are on board with this or whether they're giving up way too much and, and losing their leverage. You know, Bill, both sides are saying the other side is preventing them from getting the bill across the finish line. Um, how does this play? To Bill's point here, uh, it, it seems like it may push past Election Day. Yeah, I think that's been the history. Look, I, I'm old enough to remember I was in the Bush administration when the bipartisan deal fell apart. It's very hard uh, to get immigration through. I think some people would rather have the issue than have it resolved. There should be a pretty easy path, at least on on DACA or something, to give the president his wall, which he's not going to back down on, in exchange for some of the... Um, uh, things Democrats want on DACA. So it's it's kind of sad because we're not going to get anywhere until we start taking this apart piece by piece. Last thing, where we began, I mean, he took over the news cycle. Oh. He owned the day by that hour on the North Lawn. Can you imagine any other president doing that? You made the point earlier today that it hasn't happened. It is that astounding. That is the kind of presidency we're going to ha have. And you look at the reporters went wild. Um, you know, they sort of, they, they looked like a frenzy team of, I, I don't know what, you yeah. know, yapping puppies, something. <laughs> Others said that he looked like the crazy one. It was definitely an unusual scene. Filled the day. Yeah.